Hey guys, in just a few minutes we'll be doing the broadcast. Before I do that, number one, I want to welcome you to the website. Welcome to YouTube or welcome you to Facebook, however you're joining us. Number one, if you're our guest today, first time joining us, man, we're glad that you're part of this and we pray you'll be blessed. Church family, I hope you'll continue to connect with us every week on Wednesday nights at 6.30 and Sunday morning at 10.30. Hey, welcome to the service. I pray it's going to bless you and I pray the word will encourage you. No, we're praying for you and we love you. We can help you. You please give us a call. God bless you. Look forward to the time. Amen. Church family, it's Creasy. Mark our calendars October 25th, starting at 5 o'clock p.m. We're going to have our fall festival. It's going to be different this year than it has been in the years past, but we're still going to have lots of fun. But in order to pull this off, we're going to have to have your help. What we need is candy donations. We, you can donate through the church office and we'll pick up your candy for you, or you can drop it off in uh, the bin in front of the church. We also need a couple of volunteers and then we need lots of trunks. So if you would like to sign up, for our trunk, there's a link on the CS Kids Facebook page and on the church website, or you can get with me. Don't forget to mark your calendars. Can't wait to see you all. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Cole Mitchell. I want to take a minute to welcome everyone to today's service, especially you first time guests. I uh, hope you're encouraged by today's message and if there's anything that we can do uh, for you personally, please reach out and let us know. Thank you and enjoy the service.
Hey, good morning, church family. Man, we welcome you to the service. We hope and pray that you've had a good week, that you've enjoyed this beautiful weather that we have. And man, it's just so excited to have you back with us. And we're looking forward to the message today. Find your place in the book of Revelation. Chapter number six will be there in just a moment. Revelation chapter six. We're going to talk about the four horsemen that ride in the book of Revelation. Um, it's just, a, just one of those things we need to look at and pray about and ask God to give understanding hey before that rem remind you this that uh on october the 25th we'll begin our services again back here in this room so please join us back on october 25 regular service time we are asking you to wear a mask into the building once you've got into the building and safe distance in the chairs you can remove your mask we'll also probably be requiring that your temperature be taken and so if, if you have problems with those things we're going to ask you for right now just to uh Give us time to get comfortable being back together with so many people having COVID. So uh, if those two things bother you, then we're going to ask you to, to wait until things are ready for you. Okay. We want you to feel good about coming back, but we want people to feel safe. So masks will be required coming into the building. Plus you'll need to have your temperature taken. Okay. Uh, that's just something that the leadership said we're going to require. Uh, until further notice and things are better, okay? And hopefully that'll happen quick. That day also, we'll be having our trunk or treat. Miss Christie, I appreciate her. Great job. We still need people to sign up to park your car back there and hand the candy out, but also we need candy donations. So please remember to come by the church and do that if you don't mind and uh, help us out as we get ready. We want to be a good witness that night, share the good news as best we can during this very diffi difficult and unprecedented time. So again, October 25 is a big day back on campus. Uh, October 25th, we'll be doing our trunk or treat. So you come by and, and ask God to bless that. We're still exploring November 1 open classes. We're not there yet, but we're looking at that if we can safely distance everyone uh, and things of that nature. Hey, remember we're moving most of our prayer requests to, to Wednesday night Bible study time. Hey, I wanna remind you that uh, this weekend, Doug Heiss's mother passed away and uh, j just ask God to be with them. That funeral is today at 1 p.m. Happy Valley Baptist Church. It'll be graveside only. Uh, you are invited if you'd like to go. Uh, Happy Valley is up on 101, turn right, about two miles down, turn left, just past Walton's. Um, so, so you'll want to just kind of find your way there. It's a little white church off to the left, and ask directions, and they can get you there, okay? So pray for Doug and Nan. If you guys will get this or listening, we love you, and we pray for you, and we ask God to please bless you in the Lord, okay? So remember those people and ask God to bless them. Hey, Revelation chapter number six. Uh, as we get ready to get into this, I, I want to remind you that we're we're falling into some scriptures that are highly interpretive. There's a lot of different uh, understandings and interpretations about some of this. I'm pretty conservative in my understanding. I literally interpret Revelation where I can. There's there's much symbolic there. There's no doubt about that. But at the same time, we have to be careful being very dogmatic about some of these issues. Okay. Uh, Dr. W. Connor was Pat was the uh, uh, professor at Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary, 
And when it came to the book of Revelation or eschatology, the doctrine of being things, he said God in his own way and God in his own time will bring everything to an end. So, hey, you may know it all. I don't. But there's some things that are just so highly interpretive and different views on. So, again, I'll be staying kind of in the conservative lane. Uh, I'd encourage you to, 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 to get you some literature and, and read it, find out about it. I will say this. Revelation 5, there's worship in heaven. Revelation 6, there's war on the earth. So we've moved. We've come from heaven, and now we're on the earth. We've gone to rejoicing and praising God and worship till literally, if I may say this, we, we're starting hell on earth. There are three different sets of judgments. There's the seal judgments, there's the trumpets, and then there's the bowl. Each one has seven different types of releases, each one getting worse and, and, and difficult and heartache. So there are these three sevens that we're fixing to go through. We won't go through all of those and look at those specifically. We'll use some. And so Revelation 6, Revelation 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, man, you're looking at these three different uh, three different sets of judgments. It begins with the, the first seal. Then it goes to the trumpet. Then it goes to the bow judgments. And again, under those, there's different things being released of sevens. So we're getting into this very highly interpretive Season. We're going to introduce to you the Antichrist today. Uh, we're going to look at him, who he is. Is he in the Bible? Yes. Is he a real man? I believe he is. Some who say he's not, I think it is. Some say it's just a spirit. I don't think so. I think it's an actual man because the Bible refers to us as, as him. And, and I'll give you some descriptions about him in just a moment, okay? So in Revelation chapter 6, we've left heaven now. We're back on the earth. And we're fixing to see... Uh, heartache and and wrath and judgment unlike anything we've seen before literally jesus said that you have never seen it this bad ever before take all the difficulties of the world put them together they probably would not measure up to what we're going to see in revelation 6 and following now i'm going to do some reading today and i don't apologize for that i have many different people that i'm follow and uh, so I, I i'm i got a book right here i'm going to read some things because again this is so highly interpretive. So let's pray that God would give us understanding, that the Lord would allow our spirit to connect with Scripture, and that God would give us the truth that we need. And then I'll give you four statements about the Antichrist. I hope that will help you in understanding who he is and what he's going to do and how he's going to do it. Okay. So again, chapter 6, there are seven seals. Remember that seal in chapter 4? Nobody could open it. And that, that, that scroll, uh, somebody said this is the deed to earth and that the... The, the Lord Jesus himself took it and opened it up. And now all of these judgments begin to come to earth. Matthew 24, go read that. Luke 21. So listen to the word of God, okay? Revelation 6, verse 1. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. So remember we saw that. No one was worthy to open it, the scroll. And, and the Lamb who had been slain from the foundation of the world, he took it. So he opens it. And I heard one of the four living creatures saying, with a voice like a trumpet, loud. Come and see, and behold, or excuse me, and I looked and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. And many remind us that this particular bow did not have arrows. So there's the, the four horsemen. We've seen movies about that. The four horsemen of the apocalypse. Each one having different degrees of wrath. There's the white horse, there's the red horse, the black horse, and then there's, again, at the end, a pale horse, which probably should have been interpreted green. They, they didn't know much about green back then, and so we see green probably symbolic of some of the things that the, the Muslims are doing in the world today, and I'll get into that when, if, if we deal with that specifically. But I want to look at the white horse. Now, in Revelation, there are two white horses. There's one in Revelation 6. I believe that's the horse of the Antichrist, the faith, the false Christ. Then in Revelation 19, we see the white horse for the real Christ. Now, let me tell you why I believe that. In, in Revelation chapter 6, he talks about this rider of the white horse having a crown. The Greek word there for crown is stephanos. It means the, the, the victor's crown. But in Revelation 19, that crown is called Dadiama or diadem. So it's two different crowns because, don't you listen to me, two different people. That word diadem is a kingly crown. Revelation 19 and 12. The Antichrist 
will never wear the diadem because it only belongs to the Son of the living God. So two white horses, don't be confused, two different riders, two different crowns. One represents the Antichrist, one represents the Lord Jesus himself coming back to earth to claim what God has given him in authority and in power. So we're going to look at this Antichrist as we now enter the first half of Daniel's 70 week. Daniel 9, 27. That seven year period of tribulation, three and a half, and then great tribulation, three and a half. The Lamb has taken the seal book, the title deed to creation or earth, and is about to open the seals and declare war on the godless world. With the opening of each seal in heaven, an important event takes place. Now watch this. Be sure to compare these seals again with what Christ taught us in Matthew chapter number 24. The worship described in Revelation 44 is in preparation for the war that is described in Revelation 6 through 19. It seems strange that in one place they're worshiping and now we see war. Uh, we, we live in a very crazy world, a very, again, unprecedented time. And we're going to see how God deals with judgment and sin in the world. According to Daniel 9, 27, there are seven years to be assigned to Israel in God's prophetic calendar beginning with the signing of an agreement with the world dictator or with the one we call the Antichrist, and that will end with Christ's return to the earth to judge evil and to establish his kingdom. It is this period that is described in Revelation 6 through 19. So if you have your Bible, Revelation 6 through 19, remember, in Revelation 6, 1, the Lamb opened the seal, and I looked and I saw a white horse, and a guy had a bow. So I, I just want to say to you as we... As we think about this lawless one, there's some things we need, we need to know about him in, in giving description. Let, let, let me just share some things that I wrote down about the Antichrist. And by the way, uh, these are found all throughout Paul's epistles, Thessalonians. Uh, we know it's in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2. We know it's in um, 2 Timothy that, that this man would come. Let me give you three descriptions of the Antichrist from a biblical viewpoint. Number one, the Bible calls him the lawless one. He's a rebellious nature. He is a rebellious spirit. That's why the Bible speaks so much about us being obedient as servants because the spirit of rebellion comes from Satan. And so there's this lawlessness. Hey, could you turn on your TV and look? And you're telling me that we're not entering into a period of lawlessness? uncontrolled rage and anger or even good people today are losing their temper and their their common sense and people are going absolutely crazy and so the bible shows us this picture of this antichrist who is a lawless one here's here's one he's a liar the bible said he will deceive even the very elect of god so he's a lawless one he is a liar here's one he is lewd what do you mean by that, Pastor? Well, the Bible says he will literally seduce the saints of God. The word seduction there also could go back to deception. He's going to seduce the, the, the people of God with worldly events so much so that you're going to believe that this is so important. You're going to literally believe that the Antichrist is the Messiah. He's going to seduce you. He's going to spirit doctrines of demons. You remember what the Bible said? And, and, and I just want to just make sure you get this and, and, and you hear it with all my heart so that as your pastor, you can say that, that I've, I've been warned. Listen to this. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus and the gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled by spirit or sword as if from us. So Paul said, when this time comes, be careful. Don't, don't let the enemy, don't let Satan fool you into believing a lie. So, so this time will come on the earth, this this time when the Antichrist will rule and reign. Listen to this as the Bible speaks to us. Uh, just about how many we need to be, be, we need to be prepared to, to listen to what God says. That in the last days, perilous times will come. People will be give heed to seducing spirits, lying spirits, lewd spirits. And so therefore you and I need to be careful. So this lawless one, this liar, this lewd spirit will begin to invade the world. Now, I do believe there will be one person, the Antichrist, who will be leading this charge. And I'll tell you how he gets in charge in just a moment. But it's this lawless one that will come. And the spirit of Antichrist will be loosed on the earth. And you will see wickedness on a level that you have never seen before. You say, well, Pastor, I've seen it pretty bad. You, you've never seen anything... Uh, 
to, to the to the level that you're going to see what's going to happen when the lawless one, when the liar, when the lewd one begins to deceive and wreak havoc on the earth. What's so significant at the time that we're looking at now, we're going to begin to see three parts of Revelation. L listen very carefully. You will see his description in three parts. The first three of the half years, the events at the middle of the period, and then the last three half years in the book of Revelation. So we will see what's going on. In the first part, the middle, and then the end of this seven-year period, the Bible calls in Daniel 9.27, the last week on God's prophetic calendar. So as we study these chapters, we need to open our mind and let God the Holy Spirit speak to us that God may teach us what's going on. Again, in this section, it's the opening of the first four seals. As each seal's open, one of the four living creatures summoned a rider on a horse. Come and see. Well, where did he come from? Who sent him? Evidently God. Either God sent him or God allowed it. Seemingly it is God. In other words, events take place on the earth because of the sovereign direction of God who is in heaven. The horse imagery is probably related back to Zechariah 1, 7 through 17. Here's interesting. Listen. Horses represent God's activity on earth. The forces he uses to accomplish his divine purpose. The center of his program is Israel particularly the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is mentioned 39 times in Zechariah. God has a covenant purpose for Israel. So, so let's look at this Antichrist. Let's read it again. Revelation 6, 1 and 2. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and remember, that's the diadem, I mean, the, the uh, Stephanos, the winner's crown, not the royal crown. And a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. Um, matter of fact, let, let me just read a few more. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come and see, and another horse, fiery red, went out. And then a black horse, and that was death. And then this pale green horse is going to go out. Each seal that is open, each horse intensifies the wrath of God in the world. Let me just say a few more things about the Antichrist. We would expect him to resemble the real Christ because the Antichrist is Satan's great imitation. Amen. Can I say that again? Antichrist is Satan's great imitation. Even the Jews who sought to know the Scripture would be deceived by him. John 5, 43. The great deceiver will come as a peace leader holding a bow, but he has no arrows. Our Lord's weapon is a sword, Revelation 19, 15. Antichrist will solve the world's problems and be received as a great liberator. So we're setting the scene now for this ruler to come and literally dominate the world. When that first seal is open and that first horse, that white horse, rides out to conquer the Bible said he has a bow but he has no arrows. So, Pastor, when he comes, what will he do in order to gain enough respect and power to be able to do all this. Well, well, let me give you at least four things Scripture bears out that he will do. Dr. Warren Wiersbe, I just read from here, Dr. John Phillips, Dr. Adrian Rogers, even our own Dr. David Jeremiah has a great, great uh, section on this. You ought to get his book and you ought to read that. I believe there's at least four areas that he will dominate the world scene, literally world scene, and as a result of that, people will flock and follow him. Now hear that. People will flock to him and follow him. Now the first three and a half years, things are going to be great. He's going to be wonderful. And then in the middle of the tribulation, he's going to turn. And he's going to reveal in the temple that he is God. Or he thinks he's God. The abomination of desolation will occur. And then we will have the great tribulation. But it all begins with this lawless one, this liar, this lewd one who comes to accomplish Satan's will on this earth. God allowed it to happen. God sent the horsemen out. And God begins to judge this wicked, wicked world. Won't you listen to me, dear friend? You need to give your life to Christ now. You do not want to be a part of the wrath of God. When God has, has considered it time and that our grace period is over, and then God begins to deal with the world on an unparamount level level. So let me give you four things we know that he will do, okay? And that way, at least you'll have an understanding of, of kind of who he is and, and how he's going to achieve 
worldwide fame, popularity, and power, okay? So I'm going to give you at least four things, and here they are. Politically, he'll be a great guy. Economically, militarily, and then even religiously. So I'll say those again. Politically, economically, militarily, and religiously. He will come on the scene and he will deal with each of these areas. And in each one, he will become so successful that the world again will flock and follow to him as the Savior, the false Christ. <clears throat> That's why the Bible calls him the anti-Christ. And he will go out to deceive literally the nations or the world. The world would be swooned by him. I mean, they really would just be overtaken by the spirit of the Antichrist. As, as we look at the Holy Spirit, Antichrist conquest begins in peace. That's the first one, politically. Boy, are we in a political mess right now? I, I, I'm not going to, again, <clears throat> I spoke to you about two weeks ago about this, and what I spoke to you about was not politically. What I spoke to you about was biblical or, or moral things. But now I'm going to talk to you about political, okay? Again, not about our particular situation. I just said you need to go vote. You ought to do that. But we're going to see a peacemaker come on the scene unlike anything we have ever seen. He will bring all the different factions, all the different divisions of the world together somehow to a peace treaty. Don't you think about this. He will bring everybody to the table and somehow through deceptive powers... I think it would be demons, seducing spirits. He will cover people's eyes so they cannot see the reality of what's going on. Now remember, the church is gone. The restrainer is gone. And so now he can work as he wills. There's nothing here to keep him from doing what he wants to do. The church of God's gone. I think we're the ones who, who have held him back. I used to think that was the Holy Spirit. I don't any longer. I think the restrainer in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, I think the restrainer could be the church. Because the Spirit will still be here to reveal Christ to people. They need Him. The Jews, 144,000, will preach. Well, how are they going to know? The Holy Spirit. So the church, when it is gone, our influence, our impact, that's why it's so important that the church stay strong. We're holding Him back. As long as I believe the church is here, it will be hard for Him to come to the front and to become powerful because we will recognize Him, we will see Him for who He is and what He's trying to do, and we'll call Him out. But if the church is gone, there'll be no one here left to have a word, to sound a trumpet. And so he will come to make peace politically. Can you imagine the, <laughs> can you imagine the Republicans and the Democrats holding hands and singing Kumbaya? Wow, they used to. He will come and he will be so persuasive that he will convince arch enemies to sit down at the table and a peace treaty will be signed worldwide. Wow. We've never seen anything like it. Matthew 24 says you're going to hear wars and rumors of wars. Well, he's going to stop all the wars. All the nuclear arsenals that we hear about, all the tanks and the secret planes and all the espionage, go. This Antichrist will stop it. And all of a sudden, People who used to be arch enemies and kill each other will now come to the table and shake hands and hug necks. They'll become friends. How is that possible? Seducing spirits. Lying spirits. And so he'll become a political peacemaker. I just want you to know that's why you need to have the Holy Spirit to fill your life. Ephesians 5 over and over. Be ye filled with the Holy Spirit but do not be drunk with wine wearing his excess. Boy, we live in a drunk world today, don't we? We're drunk on everything but the Holy Spirit. So he's a political peacemaker. Number two, he will also cause economic prosperity. Now, I just want to tell you, friends, there's a lot of people who live with the devil if he give them enough money. I'm, I'm serious. It's amazing what people will do for a buck. I mean, they'll sell their soul. They'll give everything they've got for a dollar. And yet, politically, when he makes peace, then he will allow prosperity to flourish throughout the world. Some of the poorest nations in the world, all of a sudden, will be blessed. And man, they're going to praise. They're going to lift up. They're going to exalt this Antichrist. This guy with a bow, but no arrow. And so all of a sudden, politically, things are peaceful. But economically, things are prosperity. 
People have enough. They have more than enough. No hungry children walking around in the world. Can you imagine that? Wouldn't that be a great thing? Yes. And the world's going to say, wow, look what he has done. And they, again, they're going to flock to him and they're going to literally give themselves to him. Wow. He will overwhelm people with his ability to make peace and prosperity. And the world will be blind and they will follow him off to their death. That's why the Bible says we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and be aware of what's going on in the world. So politically, he's a peacemaker. Economically, he brings prosperity. Here's one, military power. He is the one who will absolutely, I want you to listen to me very carefully, he will absolutely bring the spirit of peace, not only politically, but now militarily. Uh, he'll have everything set up. Now, this is interesting. He'll have, have everything set up so that when he decides to take over, all the military powers of the world will be behind him. How's it going to happen? He's going to have to deceive them. So it's not just political. Now it's military. He'll have all the guns. He'll have all the nuclear. He'll have everything at his disposal to do what he pleases and desires to do. Wow, what a scary time. When the four horsemen ride, you better thank God that we're going. That we're in the presence of God, celebrating and worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. So this liar, this lawless one, this lewd one, who has come to deceive and cast the people of God down, and ultimately he's going to bring our death, if he can. We'll bring peace politically, economic prosperity, and he'll have all the military power of the world at his disposal. I'm so glad, Revelation 8, you ought to go read about Revelation 8, 36 and following. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Not things present, nor things to come. Nothing he'll do ultimately will be able to stand against the powers of God, the Holy Spirit. And let me say this, when the real Christ rides on the real white horse, I'm going to tell you, things are going to change. And all the church shouted, yes, thank God and we pray for that day. But till then, there will be such great deception and heartache in the world in which we live. So politically, economically, even now military, he has caused all the world to literally bow under his authority. He has swayed them. He has swooned them. He has deceived them. And now they're willing to follow him wherever he leads. But there's a fourth. I don't want you to miss this. So politically, he's a peacemaker. <clears throat> economically, there's prosperity. Military, there's power. But religiously, now, now you say, hey, we, we got him there, right? No, sir, we do not. No, sir. Even the religions of the world will pull together. Now, this is interesting. Follow me here now. We're almost getting to that to all the leaders say, hey, you know, everybody's good. God loves everybody. We're all the children of God. We are created by God, but we're not all his children by salvation. Everybody's going to heaven. That's universalism. That's not true. Does God love everybody? Yes, I believe he does. Does God want everybody saved? The Bible says it does, 1 John. Will everybody be saved? Not according to Scripture. So in this very dominant time when this rider on this white horse literally takes the world in sway, even the religions of the world, don't you think about this, even the religious leaders of the world will come to the table and declare a spiritual truth and in some way basically say, Ultimately, God loves everybody and everybody's going to be saved. And so therefore, let's quit uh, causing divisions. Let's don't say anything that would be cruel or mean. Uh, can I be honest with you? I think they're going to get us as Southern Baptists on hate speech because we declare the truth. That God says it's one man, one woman, not two men, not two women. I didn't say that. God said that. And, and God goes on to say a lot of things, not just homosexuality. There's a lot of other things. We, I just use that for an illustration because of the day we live in. But I'm going to tell you, there's coming a day in which the world will, will religiously come together. We'll all be under the same banner, or they will. We'll be gone. So, so religiously, even the preachers of the world, uh, even the high priest of the world, will all come together. The Jews and the Catholics and the Protestants and the Muslims. And I can go on and on. And they'll all come together and they'll all sing, man, what a great God. God's good all the time and all the time God's good. We serve the same God. We're going to the same place. We're on the same team. Antichrist. False Christ will deceive the world. Economically, politically, 
militarily, and then sadly, religiously. Matter of fact, you get over about Revelation 12, it said she literally made the, the people of God drink of her cup of fornication, de depicting religious uniformity there, that everybody will come together. And so this, this liar, this lawless, lewd one, will have the ability to sway the entire world away from God, the truth, the Bible, the church, because we'll be gone, the restrainer will be gone, and then everybody will flock and follow to him. So let me read this scripture again. Now, when I saw the Lamb open one of the seals, I heard one of the four living creatures say with a loud voice, Come and see. Wow, I don't want to see that, do you? I really don't. I heard an interesting conversation the other day. I've, I've heard people speak emotion and say, Hey, my, my mama's in heaven watching over me. She's, she sees me. Well, probably not. I had never thought about this. Probably not. You said, Brother Ron, you, you, you mean my mom can't see me? Probably not. Could I ask you a question? Do you think she would enjoy heaven when she sees you going through all the heartache and all the misery that you're going through here? You said, well, it caused her to pray for me. Don't you think it would break her heart? Just a thought there. I'm not being dogmatic about that. You said, hey, 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 wait a minute. Revelation 12, cloud of witnesses. It's a different whole subject there. But I'm going to tell you right now, you and I need to be prepared for the hour that is coming on this world. It is going to be absolutely excruciatingly painful. There will be death unimaginable. And, and again, we don't have time to deal with the red horse. He's going to make war. And then the black horse, the plagues. And then again, the pale horse, judgment. Or wrath, actually, the wrath of God. So, so we come to the Bible now to see this one the Bible calls the Antichrist or the false prophet. Antichrist conquer, conquest begins in peace. Now, let me say this. But soon he exchanges the empty bow for a sword. The color red, and I just want to say this to, to help you, the color red is associated with terror and death. The red dragon, Revelation 12, 3. The red beast, Revelation 17, 3. It's a picture of wanton bloodshed. That's the second horse. War has been a part of man's experience since Cain killed Abel. So this image would speak to believers in every age, reminding them that God is ultimately in control, and even though he's not responsible for the lawless deeds of men, and nations, and so these horses begin to ride. The black horse is connected with famine. Jeremiah 14, 1 and 2. Lamentations 5 and 10. Famine and war always go together. A shortage of food will always drive up prices and force governments to ration what is available. To eat bread literally by weight is a Jewish phrase. Remember that? So this, the, these horses begin to ride. And then John saw that this... Last horse, it's an interesting horse. He's, he's, he's pale, but most people that I read said really that the, 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 the horse probably is a green horse, greenish. They didn't have a word in Latin to translate into pale, and so they translated a green, they translated it pale. But uh, both authors that I read about this particular verse said it's probably going to be a horse that is green. So we see all these horses and what they're beginning to bring. Tribulation, a man will have to work all day just to secure a few for himself. <clears throat> there will be hatred and dads will turn against sons, family against each other. All this stuff will begin to go on. Now John saw two personages, death riding a pale horse. That, that horse is, and the word by the way is Hades, the ram of the dead following him. Christ has the keys of death and Hades. But as this horse rides, I want to remind you, there will be things happen on this earth unimaginable. I haven't read all those. You, you can do that for yourself. Hope you will do that. You'll find all that here in Revelation chapter number 6 as these horses ride. Now remember, each seal is open. There's seven seals. And with the first four seals, there's a horse. There's a white horse, red horse, a black horse, a pale horse, or we think green horse. And all these horses will ride. I mainly talked about the white horse because it's from that white horse that all these other horses will be deceiving the world, ultimately killing. The hand of God will be with them, whether we like that or not. That's why somebody asked me the other day, said, Brother Ron, we need to pray for COVID-19 to get out of here. Well, I, I, I wish that it would, but maybe God's using COVID-19. I'm not saying that he is, but he could. But the Antichrist will open the horrors of hell on planet Earth, unlike anything you or I have ever seen. Hey, in my uh, church before I came here, I talked to a guy who was in World War II, Charlie Boutwell. 
Charlie's with the Lord now. And Charlie was in the Pacific. And he, uh, he fought on those beaches and all those wars that we've heard about. He, he was a part of all that. And one day Charlie and I were just talking. And, and he said, Brother Ron, I, I, I never seen anything. When they did the, the beach landing, he said people were dying. And I said, well, Charles, how did you live? He said, I played dead. I floated and played dead. That's how I survived. But Charles told me this, and he cried. He said, Brother Ron, they, they, they were trenched in, and we couldn't do anything about it, and bullets were flying all the time, and death was all around you. And he said, it, it was terrible, the stench and people that you knew. And he said, two times I went out on patrol, and this broke his heart. And he said, I was the only one to come back alive, two times. And I thought how horrible that must have been for Charlie about well, how a grown man cried still many, many years later. Listen to me. I'm not diminishing that. Those men were phenomenal warriors and they ought to be celebrated. But that will pale in comparison when the white horse, the red horse, the black horse, and the pale green horse ride in this world. So you and I need to remember the Antichrist is lawless. He's a liar. He's lewd. He comes to make political peace, economic prosperity, military power, and religiously he will pull us all together. And the nations will be deceived. <clears throat> we'll get into this a little later. Then about three and a half years in, half of that week of Daniel, that seven years of Daniel 9, right in the middle, the Antichrist is going to show his true colors. And from the temple in Jerusalem, he will worldwide announce that actually he is God and he will demand people to fall down and worship him. If you don't, you'll receive a mark. You'll die. You'll starve. So I want to say to you today, church, as we get ready to look at some of these horrific things, and I won't go into all these in, in, in great detail, but in, enough, hope you'll know it. So church family, as we end up here in the book of Revelation chapter 6, talking about these horses, let, let me just remind you how significantly important it is for you to know Christ Walk in the power of the Holy Spirit so that you won't be deceived, won't be led astray, and that when the spirit of Antichrist that's already here begins to work, you will be uh, prepared to meet the Lord and go be with him, okay? Hey, a good study today. I hope and pray that it blessed you. Again, if you need further help, David Jeremiah has a great <clears throat> message out there on the four horsemen of the apocalypse. You might want to go and pick that up or watch it. You might be able to catch it on TV. There's some great, great information out there today to help you. Well, bless you. The Lord be with you. No, again, we love you and we're praying for you. Hey, remind you, October 25th, we'll be back in the service together. So I hope and pray that you'll uh, make every opportunity to be here. We are asking you to wear a mask into the building. Your temperatures will be taken after you get in and safely distance while you're seated. Then you may remove your mask. We do still have the section over here for mask only. You have to wear it the entire time. And we're going to be kind of guarding that section this time, making sure that that happens, okay? Because we want people to feel safe. You say, hey, Pastor, I don't, I don't want to wear a mask. I don't want my temperature taken. Well, could I just say this in love right now? Just wait until a better time. I don't mean to be ugly, but we, we want people to feel safe, and we want to respect as best we can the things that are going on in our country, okay, or around us, and we want to certainly do everything we can to make them feel well and welcome, all right? So, again, I love you. Uh, we may even set up another alternate place where you can go there. You don't have to wear a mask and have your temperature taken. We may do that in overflow. Not sure, but we'll see about that later. Hey, let's pray, and I pray again you have a good week. Father, we love you. We praise you. Thank you for the word of God and when the horsemen ride, especially that first one, when the Antichrist goes into the world to cause deception by peace, I pray that God you'd remind your people that, that we can trust and depend on you. So God, you lead, God, and direct us. May we always know that you are worthy to be praised. Father, we lift you up. We give you all the glory, all the honor. In Jesus' name, and all the church said, Amen.